Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary. This is Books with Tofukado, a YouTube channel where we talk about books. We rarely talk about food anymore, but it will come back maybe at some point, or maybe it will never come back and it will just be the origins of Tofukado. Anyway, I'm derailing. Today's video is all about Six of Crows. I have recently watched season two. I mean, I watched it like a month ago and then I watched it and now I'm basically in a morning like period because Netflix hasn't still announced season three renewal and that makes me sad. And they still haven't announced the so much rumored spin-off of The Six of Crows and I'm filming this, I'll tell you the date. I'm starting this vlog on the... Okay, I have no battery on my watch. I'm starting this vlog on the 14th of April. As of today, Netflix hasn't renewed either Shadow and Bone or Six of Crows spin-off. I mean, not renewed the spin-off, but like announced the spin-off. I am filming this vlog to manifest the spin-off, to manifest season three also, even though I'm not gonna read Shadow and Bone. I want it to happen. I want both things to happen and I'm doing this so it happens. And also because I'm sad that I have no more sac Shadow and Bone content and so to cope I'm just gonna reread the books because I really did like the books a lot. I'm gonna reread these two beautiful babies because they were one of the best books that I read last year even though they didn't reach any rankings. They were, specifically this one, was one of the best fantasy books like my heart. So I want to re-experience that, I want to feel it again and I want to do it by annotating it this time if I manage to show you the colors. It frustrates me that it doesn't really fit the theme. I don't have any red tabs anymore and I refuse to buy some just for the sake of the video and that's what I'm gonna do. So obviously I'm gonna start with Six of Crows and then I'm gonna read Crooked Kingdom. I'm gonna annotate both of them and we're gonna have some fun and maybe by the end of the week Netflix will have announced the renewal and the spin-off. Maybe? Please, please? <laughs> anyway, I'm just gonna go and start reading Six of Crows. I have a killing migraine right now, like it's really... I mean, I've, it, it's been going on for a week because I have a lot of jaw pain, which is why maybe I'm talking a bit weird. But I have a lot of jaw pain which triggers my migraines, which makes me miserable. But reading makes it a bit better, so I'm gonna go put some ASMR, read Six of Crows and annotate it a bit and maybe it will be better by the end of it. I realized as I was filming these videos that I never explained what <laughs> these two beauties are about. Uh, so I thought I could do, <laughs> even if it's like literally like Friday and I've already been talking about this for like a week. I thought I could do a recap and I'll put it uh, at the beginning of the video because thank god I can edit this after I film uh, to explain what the Grisha verse is, what the Shadow and Bone trilogy are, what the duologies are, etc. etc. It's gonna be very quick, I'm not gonna go into details of it, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm just gonna explain the basics and you're gonna go with it. So the basics are the following. One, this is a story, a series of books written by Lee Bardugo. It's, it's composed of a trilogy, the Shadow and Bone trilogy, two duologies, the current duology that I'm reading, the Six of Crows duology, and the King of Scars duology. Netflix TV show that you might probably know is a mix of everything. <laughs> so if you want to read the books before watching the TV show, you have to read all of it because there's all of it in it. There's less content on the Shadow and uh, on the King of Scars duology in the series, but there's still content from that. So yeah. Uh, so the Grishaverse. What is this about? The Grishaverse. It's a universe where. Uh, there's people that can do magic. They don't really call it magic in the books. They call it power, source, whatever, you know, like some people are against them, some people are for them, there's a war. And the most important plot point is that there is a big smoke thingy that divides the country, like a barrier, a wall. But it's like, you can go through it, but the moment you enter this like 
fold, that's how they call it. There's like bad creatures that attack you if you go in it. Anyway, so that's the setting. We have the magic people, we have the war, we have this fold that divides the country and voila, that's the setting. And so we follow our main character, Alina Starkov, who doesn't have any powers or that's what they make us think. Because basically in this like world, to see whether or not you have magic powers, if you're Grisha, Grisha, they like scratch you in the arm and if there's like something that comes out then you're Grisha, if nothing happens then you're like normal. And when this happened in Alina's life and Mal's life, his, well, her friend, they were hiding so they never got tested and so she's like I don't have any powers, I'm not Grisha, I'm not special. But she joins like like she goes to be she's a cartographer and uh, she goes to war and she goes in a boat to see you know they're trying to cur like cartography the fold the big thing that like prevents them from crossing safely and when she goes in she goes in they get attacked and she suddenly oh can summon light kaboom surprise who could have thought she is the one and that's it, that's the setting. It's a classic YA, she's the chosen one, she's gonna save us all, Alina the Saint, and blah blah blah. So that's the Shadow and Moan trilogy. And then there's the Six of Crows duology, which is the one that I'm reading. I'm not gonna say a lot of things because whatever I'm, or anything I'm gonna say is gonna be a spoiler for the initial trilogy. I'm just gonna say, if you just want to read this, you can. It just, there's some things you're not gonna get, so I just, the three first books are really easy to read, like, you can read them in like, one book every two days so it's very like smooth it's like 300 pages per book it's very light YA so you're not gonna be dying so really like just you know I know some people say you can read this too without reading the others but why would you do that to yourself like it doesn't make any sense anyway so that being said we can continue the vlog and actually follow a logical order in this like video so see you I just read like 20 minutes and it's enough to know that this is still a five star book that this is just amazing and that Kasbrecker I, I, I just I just love him like I at the risk of sounding dramatic I, I, I freaking love this character and I just love it like not only I love Kasbrecker I mean I'm gonna say Kaz at least a hundred thousand times in this vlog, but Kaz Brecker is an amazing character, but Inej is an amazing character, Jasper is an amazing character, and every other character in this book is amazing. And what's great, and I think my experience reading it now, because I read this, hello son, uh, I read this book, I think, before I watched season one of Shadow and Bone, so I didn't have the actors in my head while reading it, but now I have the actors. And I have already read this book, so it's like I'm not only reliving the book with the actors in my head, which makes it easier. 
this is like maybe it's personal but I have hard time imagining things in my head when I read and I sometimes need visual cues so when I'm reading a book I with a lot of characters I tend to make fun casting of those characters to make me visualize them better I don't know if that's weird but it helps me and I'm pretty sure everyone that has a hard time imagining things with their head like sometimes does this too anyway what I'm trying to say is like now that I have the actual actors and that the actors are so well casted for these characters it makes the experience much more enjoyable because I can actually see how things would happen if it was a TV show I don't know Maybe I'm the only one that does this, but it does help me and it makes it such a much more enjoyable experience. And I did the same with The Hunger Games, I did the same with The Maze Runner, and I did the same with Eddie, any other like book that I enjoyed a lot. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent, but what I want to say is that this book is still as good as the first time. I just read 50 pages. I'm gonna go read more now. I love this book and this is not an objective vlog. So if you're looking for an actual objective vlog of... I will try to be a bit critical about it, but this is mostly going to be a fangirling vlog. So if you don't want that, go check another vlogs, like another person's vlog. But if you are a hardcore fan, because now I can say that I'm a hardcore fan because I just love this series. Yeah, stay and just enjoy me fangirling and enjoying this book as much as you would enjoy it. So see you, going to read more and um. The migraine is a bit better. The ASMR is helping, but talking is not helping because it makes my jaw hurt. So I'm probably not gonna film more today and I'll probably see you tomorrow. And yeah, bye-bye. Going to read more. Hello, hello, hello everyone. We are back. I... It's the day after. <laughs> and... <laughs> oh my god, I almost broke one thing. It's the day after and I have read almost the entirety of Six of Crows. I was very hard to control myself and not finish it yesterday. I have like a hundred pages left. I'm gonna finish it right now and then I'm gonna start Crooked Kingdom because I forgot how good these books were and I was not ready to read this again. I mean, I was ready to read this again, but I was not ready to feel all the things that I'm feeling while reading this. And I am very glad, I am very happy. I am oh, I am so happy that I had that I took this decision and I'm I'm proud of myself. What uh, Yeah, so yesterday once I stopped filming, I continued reading and I stopped reading yesterday or before dinner. And this morning I was about to read, but I was like, no, I'm just, you know, I'm going to do productive things. And then this afternoon that way I can chill because this morning I wanted to do for a long run. So I did go out, I did 15K and now it's the afternoon and I know I'm not going to do anything productive. So I'm happy that I did the productive stuff this morning, aka organizing all my clothes, uh, doing a laundry and all of this boring adult shit that we all have to do. So now I can properly enjoy Six of Crows and... Crooked Kingdom, which I forgot was this big. This is a, sh 
this is this is a uh, how many pages is this i'm looking okay it's only 100 pages more so that's okay but it does look way th like i i just love how aesthetic these two books are they're way more aesthetic than the shadow and bone books i am too lazy to stand up and show them to you also i'm missing the first one so like i gave it to a friend i lent it to a friend but i just find these two books very aesthetically pleasing and the contrasting you know colors and everything and obviously the crows like you know i don't know i really like him um and yeah so what i'm gonna do now is continue reading this i then i'm gonna make some waffles because i forgot that nina talks about waffles a lot in this book and i made me crave some waffles and yesterday i made waffles uh, i had some some leftover butter so i still have some to make like two waffles and that's like a good post-workout snack so i'm gonna do that and while eating the waffles i'll continue reading crooked kingdom so that's basically gonna be my afternoon because uh as of now i'm basically in the ice uh ice court heist uh it's in, i'm in the middle of it a lot of things are happening uh there's been a lot of annotating a lot of tabbing a lot of stuff here i i i i, I forgot how good it was like I, I just and like I the only thing that's orange and has a double tap I don't know if you can see in the camera yeah like see you have the there's there's a double tap situation here because blue I don't know if you can see blue is supposed to be favorite moments which you know by it, there there's a lot uh, light pink a little beige is supposed to be like character quirks like Jasper making jokes and all of this. A uh, light pale, this one, like very pale green is supposed to be funny moments because there's actually, I forgot how funny this book is. Uh, and dark blue is like plot. Wait, what's dark blue? I forgot what dark blue is. It's sad moments, dark blue, I think. No, dark blue is food, uh, which in this book is basically Nina talking about waffles. And then there's, that's it, that's it. And the thing is, like, I reached a moment where I was like, okay, this is a faith moment, but I have a lot of faith moments in this book, and I want this to be really visible when I reread again the book, or when I want to look at it, or whatever. And so I added the double tab. And so far, there's only one, and it's the following passage. Spoilers, if you haven't, like... Oh, my God, this is so beautiful. Uh, I don't want your prayers, he said, he being Kaz. What do you want then, Inej says. The old answers came easily to mind. Money, vengeance, Jordi's voice in my head, silence forever. But a different reply roared to life inside him. Loud, insistent and unwelcome. You, Inej, you. We almost got this in the, like we got a very similar scene in the TV show to this like scene. And it was very nice because I remembered reading this paragraph, this passage, and seeing the internal struggle of Kaz. And it was very nice to reread it again, and I was like, oh! I, I just freaking loved it. Anyway, uh, that is, you know, my favorite passage as of, of the book. Obviously, there's a lot of things I like in the book, but the Kaz in Ash, like, tension is like, oh! Anyway, I'm gonna continue reading now. That's enough talking as of now. And I'll see you guys later for an update on both books and making some waffles. Like Nina loves, because I, I do love some waffles. Like Nina is not my favorite character, but I do relate to her when it comes to waffles. Like waffles are life. <laughs> As I was saying, I finished this beauty, I finished this amazing book, and I love it. I freaking love it. I There's action, there's romance, there's like amazing characters, there's like individual different 
point of views and each point of view is different and like you can tell that you're in the point of view of that character and it's just like I am in love and the only complaint I have about this book is that there's not enough Kaz point of views like chapters and it's funny because I never read I'm that person I never read the tiny interviews that there is at the end like you know these things that they interview with the author and I think the reason why <laughs> There's not so many point like cast chapters is because like I'm gonna read you the question and the answer. Was there a character you found easiest to write? Was there a character whose voice took more time to find? And she answered Livardugo. Matthias was the easiest to write because he's ridiculously ridiculously dogmatic. He's high drama with a very clear worldview and it takes a lot to make him waver, a lot being Nina. Cass was the most challenging because he's so smart. That whole thing about characters only being as smart as their authors, total lie. Authors have time to craft and think and plan while our characters just appear to react in the moment. Cass was so crafty he made my headache. But I have to say the most fun point of view to write has been Waylon in Crooked Kingdom because he's so unlike the other members of the crew. So I think the reason why there's not that many Cass point of view, points of view chapters is because, as she said, it was hard to do it. And I understand because it's true that his chapters are particularly excellent. And like, I think it's because she really wanted to make them like as much. Oh, there's a huge insect in my, okay, goodbye, he left. There was a huge in insect in my balcony. Uh, anyway, so needless to say, I absolutely adore that. I forgot how badass Nina was. And I know in the previous update before I said this, I said that I didn't really like Nina and I still don't like, she's a cool character and I like her, but she's not my favorite character, but I forgot she was the one huge spoiler that sacrifices herself. Like I knew she got addicted to uh, uh, Jorda Parem, but I didn't know she was the one who said, I'm gonna do it to save you guys, which is very cool. Like I really forgot about this, which is a main plot point and sometimes I forget this which is good because then when I reread it I really enjoy the thing like it's the first time but uh, yeah she just made it like much like she just made it into the more badass section even though it's a bit suicidal but every crow in this book like every crow is a suicidal person so that's not a shock anyway so in honor of Nina I made myself some very good waffles mm, they're just like out of the waffle mm -hmm. they're very good Mm. I love waffles. Anyway, Six of, uh, Six of Crows is a masterpiece, even after two reads. I'm gonna read Crooked Kingdom now as I eat these waffles. And the only thing I want to say is I do not remember anything about Crooked Kingdom, which is weird because I did remember a lot of things that happened with Six of Crows. And I think when I read Crooked Kingdom, I had to be in a bad mood or something because I actually do not remember anything besides that thing that happens in Crooked Kingdom. So, you know, we'll see. I'm gonna go read now and hopefully... I think I'm gonna read like half before the end of the day and tomorrow I'll finish it and I'll finish this blog. But I have to say, this has been very enjoyable so far. And... I really hope Netflix goes for the spin-off because honestly, they have the actors, they have the commitment, they have the funds, they have the budget, come on, don't kill ourselves like Netflix. So let's just go for it. Let's announce it. Let's make it happen. Let's go crazy and make that spin-off. And season three of Shadow and Bone. Anyway, I'm gonna continue reading and reading. So see you. Thank you.
All right, so I might have finished Crooked Kingdom and obviously I finished Six of Crows, but that you already know. I thought I could finish this Sunday. I was extremely optimistic because Sunday I actually had to do adult stuff. I also had my mother-in-law coming, so I forgot about that, which meant that I couldn't actually do as much reading as I thought I could. Uh, and then the week started and boy oh boy, have I had a shitty week because one, my jaw has been killing me. Well, today it's not been killing me. But my jaw has been killing me, which turned into me being a ball of pain and being like in pain all week, all day long, non-stop. I could not eat because my freaking jaw hurt. So I was in a pissy mood because I love eating. Come on, I love eating. Like it's my main, like I look forward to every meal in my day. And with this pain, I was like not looking forward to it. And I hate that feeling because I love eating. Anyway. That was Monday, then Tuesday was the same, then Wednesday I had a shitty day at the job. Like, I've just had such a week. But you're not here for this, you're here to hear me talk about Crooked Kingdom. But this is all just to say that I finished this like yesterday instead of like Sunday. So basically I finished it on Thursday. And I can just say now that I finished it and I loved it. And I loved it way more than the first time I read it. I read it. And this is actually a 5 out of 5 book now. And it joins Six of Crows with the perfect duology. The both are five star books. Six, Six of Crows is slightly superior because I feel like the plot is less convoluted and it's better. But Crooked Kingdom has some of the best and some of my favorite scenes. And Kaz is more present, so you know. And then Crooked Kingdom has that scene, spoiler alert, where Matthias dies. And I mean, that's pretty sad. I almost cried. And... Yeah, like this book is very, very enjoyable too. But yeah, Six of Crows is my fave out of the two. And I wish there were more because honestly, I just love these people, like these people. <laughs> I love these characters and I love the heist thingy. I'm really someone that loves heist stuff. So like Ocean's Eleven, An Italian Job or something like this. I forgot the, the name of the movie. Uh, the Casa de Papel, before it started to go down. Like, it, the, I love these type of things. I love when like people lay out plans and then they execute them and it goes out according to plan, but then there's like a problem and then it like, this is just perfect, amazing. And the characters are just deliciously perfect and I just love it. So, as you can see by the number of tabs, I really did enjoy these books. I think I'm gonna install an annual reread because this was very enjoyable and it gave me the boost I needed to fully get out of a reading slump. So mm, thank you books, you're great. And I love reading. I love Casbreaker and yeah, that's it. Uh, it's a quick wrap up, but honestly, were we surprised that I was gonna again enjoy these books and that I was gonna tap things and that I just, yeah, no, we were not. So I'm just gonna wrap this up. I'm just gonna say that I love this and I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Hopefully Netflix announces, hopefully this video manifested the spin-off and season 3 of Six of, of Shadow and Bone. And uh, if you like this video, as per usual, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to spread the Tofuka the love. And I'll see you guys next time for more content.